Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try Avon Colony. Avon Colony is a, well, it's a colony building game. You are in charge of mankind's first colony outside of the solar system. There's a campaign mode with um, a, a progression of, of missions, I suppose, with um, a lot of extra, like, sort of flavor text and voice acting. It's actually kind of impressive. It is a pre-release game, still very much in beta. Don't know what the end game is going to be like or anything like that, but I feel that there's an impressive level of polish with the story. I thought it was kind of cute and interesting. Um, I, if I go and click here, they're going to start Welcome talking at me, so that's why I'm on the sandbox tab. And in fact, to avoid some of those spoilers and also being interrupted by various story type events, I'm just going to play in sandbox mode over here. I don't expect to actually be quite as interesting as the campaign, but we'll see. You can see we can tune a lot of our... Um, of our variables here for our sandbox game. I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything to default. And yeah, we'll, we'll start off on Sandy Gulch over here and uh, see how it goes. So here we are in the game. This is a colony building game. There, there's a lot of them like this. There's a sort of like, it's a little bit more realistic. You have to have everything contained. There's atmosphere to be concerned with. The actual atmosphere of the planet itself is uninhabitable or unbreathable. Um, so it's not like RimWorld, where you're sort of arbitrarily building things all over the place. You can go to internal cameras inside your base over here, and you can actually click on people and find out details about them and their current situation in life. But most of the time, you're going to be playing uh, from a little bit further away. So the primary building resource that you're going to use, or rather the only building resource you're going to use, are going to be nanites over here. We start with 140. You can produce more if you mine a resource, like iron deposit over here, and then convert that into nanites with a nanite processor. Uh, here is our electricity, and here's our population, the total number, which is currently 16, and their happiness, our O2 levels, our storage levels, water, food, and we can pause the game, which actually I should definitely be doing if I'm gonna be talking here because people are eating food and drinking my water and they'll soon die if I don't start doing anything. Start off with a handful of buildings. We've got a solar panel over here. This is our construction drone hub. This is what builds all of our buildings. Little drones fly out and do things. We've got a handful more solar modules actually, as well as some storage modules over here. Oh, that's our oxygen regulator module we also have a intake fan over here and we've got our life support modules that we start off with they have a cap of 16 inhabitants each which means we have an actual max of 32 we currently have 16 people first thing i'm going to do is try to get a little bit more power because 26 of 30 is not a whole lot we did spawn right next to a geothermal vent over here so that seems like a pretty good thing to do to start off with it's going to use 24 nanites also needs 10 workers to build to work optimally hmm you know what, maybe I'll just build solar panels because they do not need any workers whatsoever. Uh, most buildings have tiers. You can see here our solar panels come in three different tiers. You can upgrade an existing one to a higher tier if we want. So this is currently a tier two. Let's take a look at the cost. Um, 12 nanites generates eight power all the way up to 36 nanites generate up to 26 power. So um, either way, yeah, it's just pretty efficient. It's four nanite more than the power same thing all the way through. So the higher tier is definitely more efficient. Um, take Doesn't take up any more room. So I think the thing to do might just be to upgrade this guy for eight more nanites. Uh, the, solar, the, uh, the world is based sort of like on a day cycle where like nighttime is winter. Like there's a bunch of different ways to sort of visualize how these cycles work. But basically the, the upshot of it is you do spend about a quarter of your time in a winter status. During winter, your solar power panels only generate half as much power and your farming is severely limited. We do have a mission waiting for I us here. You're keeping the happiness of your colonists in mind as you grow your colony. Remember, when we set up our sandbox, together. we set population as the overall goal. So it's going to keep giving me population goals to reach and then give me uh, some slight rewards when we reach there. That's that's all that's going to be in the sandbox mode. And the campaign has quite a lot of different things. So anyway, we're going to I guess we're just going to use the solar panel over there and we'll probably need a little bit more power than that. I'm actually considering building a second one right away. You can see here, it doesn't actually matter. I can place things everywhere, but ultimately everything will have to be connected together in some fashion. So I'm going to build another tier three solar panel. I think we're going to have plenty of nanites for that. I'll go ahead and unpause. And I will also get going with my mining over here because I need a nanite income. So we're going to build a mine over here on top of the iron. And I'm also going to build a nanite processor, which will take the iron and convert it to nanites. It can be anywhere, but I think it probably makes a lot of sense to have it just be maybe adjacent over here. Now, as long as your buildings are touching, people will, can walk through one to the other, but they much prefer using these tunnels. I, I assume they've got, I don't know, little, like people movers or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and like stretch this out this way. 
And then maybe something like this. Um, and then maybe something like that. Now, the, the tunnels do use power, but not a whole lot. They're also pretty cheap to build, so I think that's going to be okay. So your people will be a lot happier about the commute time if you have these little tunnels over here. Hey there. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Excellent. All right. So our little drone is going out and building things. I could upgrade the construction drone hub to have more drones. Every upgrade gives an extra drone going out there so things get built faster but i don't think that's something we actually have to rush power is very very good notice in winter we'll only have 32 because there's a lot less sun but we can go and build something on a geothermal vent later on but we do need more people for that next priority will probably be get get some farming down and then we will try to actually increase our overall population after that so this nanite processor oh, apparently we did have a little bit in storage a little bit of copper was indeed in storage, so this is going to be able to start working even before we get the mine hooked up, but it'll soon run out, and then that'll start to produce, but that's okay. So again, storage is good, people is good, yeah. All right, we'll get some farming down. So, farming structures. There are greenhouses that work year-round, but it takes a fair amount of material to build. Um, and then you've got the actual farms over here. So 10 nanite, 5 power, 5 workers. I don't know how to like compare the rates. Even the greenhouse, while it can grow crops in winter, it's only 50% efficiency. So generally speaking, I think it's probably fine to just do normal farming most of the time. Um, and just make sure to stockpile enough. So what I want to do is I'm going to extend out my tunnel over here and then get some farms adjacent to it. So notice I can't build a two, tier two or tier three yet. You've got to build the base one first and then you can build the others, which I'm not convinced is like a hugely important mechanic, but it's gonna be fine. We got a different set of crops. These first six can be eaten directly. The last six can't be eaten directly. You can enable building them if you want. It just sort of filters it out so you don't accidentally spend all your resources building something you can't eat right away. You, later on, we will be able to do various uh, productions, like we'll be able to mill the wheat into flour, cook the flour into bread, for example. For now, I think it's going to be fine if we just start with uh, with barley. I guess we can mostly eat it directly. I don't know. Um, do I want to... I don't know how tightly clustered I want everything to be in here. I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Now, let me kick up the speed a notch here for this to finish. You'll see what happens when you build a farm. So after the farm gets built, it then goes and puts little plots everywhere. And that's where the farming actually occurs. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a tier 2 farm as well for a little bit of variety. We'll get some corn growing. Mostly a grain-based diet, but that's alright. Is there like a really good spot for corn later on? Not really. Sort of all the same. So I'm going to build it a little further up this way. So we get a little less overlap. Yeah. What about rice? Oh, rice is probably much better. There we go. I'm going to do that. So we'll get a rice farm. This should be a good amount of food to get started. Again, we won't have food storage in the winter. I do like these stats. It tells you how many, how much food you've got per colonist, and whether that's good or not, as well as your variety of food. On your colony management screen, which you can access from here or with the R hotkey, you can disable certain... Um, consumables if you don't want people eating a certain thing directly, maybe because you want to trade or maybe because you want to process it into something else. So our power is, well, currently good. In the winter, it will definitely run out. Um, I think, so now that we've got farming down, oh, and insufficient power right away. You know what? Let's go ahead and get a geothermal down. It does take a fair amount of people to work, but we're going to try to bring some more people in soon. And even if we want one or two people, it should generate a fair amount of power. The, when you run out of power, structures the furthest away from your power generators are the ones that are cut off first. You don't want to lose power in your, um, in your storage modules, because if you had any food in there, it will instantly go away. Okay. Power is fine. Yeah, even without a ton of people kicking around, we've only got three workers in there because our population is low. Oh, sandworms. I have no idea what their deal is. I have no idea what the hell that, that does for us. It's probably not good, though. Anyway, next issue is water. Water, water, water. Where do we get water extraction over here? You can extract atmospheric water, but it's pretty weak sauce. You can also get some water out of the geothermal generator. If you prioritize that, it'll make less power, but we'll generate water. But if we go to our water pump, we've got some nice wetland over there, so we can go and soak some of that out there. So I'm going to do that. Winter approaches. Winter is coming. Less power from our solar panels and um, no more food. So hopefully we'll have enough food intake. I want to get a couple more key structures in here before we expand too much. Uh, 
Oh, we need nanites for that, so I guess we're going to have to wait a little bit more for some of these nanites to accrue. I may have overbuilt, I don't know. Um, but a trade hub, so we can trade things away and get some stuff back, but also an immigration center, which I'm going to start with the immigration center, and I'm going to go ahead and put it right here because I want to be able to get more people in here. So now it's winter. Maybe winter is not the best time to start attracting more people, but we need more employees to work some of these sites. So our food growth is going to go to nothing, but hopefully we'll be able to make it through. Water is stabilizing. This actually might be the cap of our water storage over here. I'm not sure if we can tell easily. But yeah, I should take a look at the rest of the screen over here. We've got our population and morale, so we get some details. You can see we only have 32% of jobs filled. We need more people, 100% employment. We need more people down here to be able to... Like, there's no sense in building more buildings. Got some extra information. Food consumption stats. Enhancers not yet enabled. Um, drugs and things are something you can produce later on. Um, we, can, we can prohibit drugs, for example. Addiction is a thing. Uh, there are stimulants. There are ways to help uh, reduce crime, keep people even more passive, that sort of thing. We could implement uh, rationing, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. So it lowers the freedom morale, so people get a little unhappy about that. But we're going to make sure that we can have food throughout the water, uh, the winter. Here's our list of colonists, their current morale and their health, for example. All of our buildings and their efficiency, which takes a hit because of our population. And lots of little grass and stuff like that, which is lovely. Trade screen over here. These are things that we can export. In exchange, we will get these things imported. But we need a trade hub set up for that. And we've got a bunch of overlays that we can set up here. Um, air overall quality is a pretty important one. We seem to be okay now, but we will have to build some more air intakes as we go forward. So we'll get some extra pops, hopefully. Right now, there's nothing for us to do but to wait. We either need more population for efficiency or just more nanites accrued. Kind of a little bit of both. So hopefully that ship will keep bringing some people over here. 25% efficiency. Three colonists per ship. I think at max efficiency we get about seven per trip here. But we should get some more people. So, oh, by the way, the story is... Um, so we've got this colony, right? And there we go. Come on, give me people. We've got, there you go, 19 people. So we've got this colony here, but there's a big colony ship in orbit. There, we were sent down here to get the planet ready. Tons of people are living in a spaceship recall, or orbit. That's who we're, um... Your citizens the right to vote on their colony governor. It looks like that time is upon us again. That's who we're trading with, is a colony ship in orbit. They've got a bunch of resources we can swap back and forth. Um, yeah, so there is a referendum. Uh, I think it's got, it, we've got it set to every three souls in the sandbox over here. Oh, there's our immigrants. And we have to make sure that our people are happy enough that we will get re-elected. That is, that is one of our goals here. So I want to be able to build a trade hub next. Probably. Because what else we might need? Well, winter's over, so our food is still dropping. So we will need some more farming, but we also need more people. Tempted about putting in some outhouse, and it's interesting, this is, um, the sandbox here is definitely a little bit more challenging than the base game. So we're not going to go for a trade hub yet. Uh, we are going to instead put in some more farming, and what I should really do, actually, is upgrade these to higher rank farms so that we can get more efficiency. We, we can't have more people, so just building more farms is not the path. But instead, what we'll do is, yeah, we'll get some higher tier farms. There's a referendum election coming up soon, and I have some feedback from your colonists. So, right now we're going to get 68% of the vote. That's pretty good. Here are the biggest complaints. No health care and having to walk far for the job. And that commute penalty comes from people who have to cut through buildings to get places because it's not very efficient. So there you go. So these are all... Oh, that's the water pump I just upgraded. Oops. This is the farm. That's what I meant to do. My bad. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and upgrade you. We want to get you all the way up to tier 3 get more food without requiring more people to do it so we've got 32 max housing we're at 22 right now so we've still got some room we'll get some more people coming in here there we go 50 percent efficiency now we're gonna get five colonists per trip oh, so then i guess it'll go seven and then maybe eight ten something i think when you build it it tells you how many it can handle at a max hmm, it doesn't say i still would like a trade hub but i don't know if that's our priority uh storage is currently fine Nanites are growing. We would like to have that come in a little bit faster, but those all need people to work those things. Only the solar panels... Well, there's a couple of things that don't need people. Um, how is our power? Power is actually good. We could go and boost it in a few different ways, but I think we're going to be generally fine. We probably 
I've compiled some feedback to help guide you in the upcoming referendum election. Yeah, you want more food, uh, food variety? I think I will go and build another farm. I'm going to go right to a tier three. And we're going to get uh, maybe some broccoli going on here. And that's not a terrible spot. I'm going to build you there and just get a little road connected up. And that should be okay. Now, we don't quite have enough people to work all this, but it's still going to help overall with our food gain. Power is going to be stable. All right, I like it. And we are almost capped on our population. There you go, another immigrant vessel. That's five more people. We can only fit five more people, so that's one more vessel. So we should look into getting some more housing. So um, these apartments can hold 16 people, just like the base uh, life support modules. The habitats can fit more, 36 here, and they actually can level up to up to 66 people. The difference is these are quite large. I think what I'm going to do is throw an apartment in there. I mean, we could get people a little closer to there. That's not a bad idea. Why don't I just put an apartment right there? You will have to walk through the farm to get to the main hallway. But that's not so bad. And actually, what I am considering doing, and I will do, is this. Again, it'll take a little of power and a little bit of resources, but it will keep the... Um, the the pathing a little bit low we still have the um the rationing in place here so we're going through another winter but i think our food's gonna be fine and they've given me some feedback that might help so yeah we're doing a referendum every winter so if we do sort of mess up it will not be long before we get punished for it real hard so nanites continue to come in and that's without working at full efficiency you can see the iron both the iron man iron mine and the nanite processor could just do a lot more by having more people in here now, I think also we're going to go ahead and upgrade these. I don't know if the mine needed it or not. Low food, yes, indeed. I don't know if the mine needed the upgrade as much as the nanite processor. I guess I could check to see, you know, if we've got a backflow. No, we actually don't have a, uh, a flow of iron in here, so we definitely needed this to be upgraded. What's the crisis? Oh, it's the food. Yeah, no, we're going to be fine. Winter's got a little bit longer to last, but we're going to be okay. I'm going to go and get yet another level of the iron mine here. Just keep that flowing. And ideally have actual iron supplies growing. Uh, we still don't have any in the list. Does it say anything about how quickly it can process them? Not at this time. 6.5 food per colonist. Ooh, these lightning storms can be really bad. So far, so good. And yeah, if we can get a trade hub going, we can actually get food come in pretty quick. There's our referendum, boss. so we're still okay for now. But, um, okay, winter is over. I definitely want to get more farming down. That is absolutely the priority. Uh, I'm going to wait until we can get enough nanites for the next tier. Just want to build a tier 3 right away. There we are. And quinoa. Ooh, we can get a lot of quinoa. We might double up on this, actually. I'm not sure. Well, we still don't have enough people. Like, if we take a look over here, um, jobs filled only 58%. But we are making a little bit more food. I mean, our, our total numbers are relatively stable, which is a little bit unpleasant. You could get a greenhouse going on, but we are getting more and more population in. Um, there we go. Seven colonists per troop per, per trip. I can't prioritize this building as having more pop or like more people, but I could go and cut it back somewhere. Like we don't really need quite as much power as we do, so I could go and cut back on that number, and then they would go and redistribute somewhere else. But I think we're going to be okay. Our storage is full. That's not good. That's going to stop us from having more food. So these mini storage depots are very small. Um, they can't be upgraded, whereas this one can. Uh, I think I'm going to put it here because there's not actually a lot of room to build down there. I'll just build a big one. The mini ones are, are good for filling in these little gaps, though. I can't, you know, complain about having them, but we definitely need this up because right now we're not storing any more food. It's going to waste. There we are. So we got lots of room and insufficient housing. We are now full. Actually, should have built a little bit sooner than that. That's all right. Um, I could go... Well, I can't upgrade this one. Oh, because it's an apartment. That's right. It's not a habitat. Let's go ahead and build another apartment over here because we want to use the space at some point. And yes, we're full right now. Let's get that going on. But we'll have to build a proper habitat soon. Power is still stable. In fact, the power will keep rising as we have more and more employees for a geothermal generator. So we're going to be good there for quite some time. Um, I don't think I'm going to build another apartment. I think I'll leave this space open for, I don't know, something else down the road. Maybe some entertainment buildings, actually. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Uh, objective complete. Excellent. 
and we'll probably get a new mission for more population. Nine immigrants came in. So it looks like you get nine at 100% efficiency. All right, good. Yeah, I guess I could have figured that out if I was willing to do math. Ooh, look at these holes over here. Hmm. So what's our next priority? Ooh, reward available. Ah. You may select one of the following resources. See, our food's actually really good. We may have just been storage capped for a long time. Well, with more population, we're actually working better. I think we actually are just going to take more immigrants. I realize it's winter, but right now, what we're looking for is indeed more immigrants. Now, we could work to make people a little bit happier as well. There's different buildings that provide some entertainment or increase food quality. For example, these barn grills. Parks give you entertainment. Real, cent real retail center increases consumption morale people are happy because they get to consume various things at our hospitals over here it's better if we can uh, create if we have like health care like or rather the ability to build drugs I'm gonna build a park because it doesn't actually require any people to work so oh it's quite big I didn't think it was quite that large let me get back to you I was gonna just put it right there next to our apartments but um, I have to figure out exactly where we're gonna grow going forward Oh, and the new missions probably reach 100 people. Yep. Colony. So we're going to do that. Um, our ha uh, housing is completely overused. So let's build that habitat now. And what I think I'm going to do is do that. And I'm not sure there's an edge of the map over here. I, I'm not sure that's the edge of the map, actually. No, it's not, because there's plenty of stuff over here. It's just within the range of my drone. There is, I believe, an edge of the map. But mostly, it's your construction drones have a range, so we'll have to build a new one of those relatively soon. We got that, and housing capacity used, 98%. Indeed. Let's quickly get this up and running here. Some unhappy colonists, but that went away. It may have been some of the housing, actually. So we're going to do that, and then I'll go ahead and build a park next to this. It just uses a little bit of power and some nanites, of course. Although our nanites are coming at a pretty good rate right now, so we're going to be okay. Do need to get trade set up. I think that'll be the next thing that I do, actually. Build one right over here. And there we go. Those lines, by the way, show you where workers can come in from. It's very handy, so you can see sort of range and things like that. So you need to have your housing spread out a little bit, but at the same time, you don't want it too spread out because then you want to be able to, you know, get your entertainment centers in a reasonable spot. We did build a bar and grill. It's very small. You can see here, if we built it anywhere around here, it would reach all of our um, housing. Not to mention some of the buildings, actually. So I'm going to go and put this down. And what's nice about the bar and grill is actually three modes. There's the bar mode, which increases the rate at which alcoholic beverages and enhancements and substances are used. The bistro mode, mode, which increases food quality. So it makes up for the fact we don't have that much variety. Or the lounge mode, which gives entertainment happiness. Now, we do have the park for entertainment happiness, so I'll just get the food quality to go up. People will feel a little bit better about the fact that um, they were just mostly eating quinoa these days. So yeah, so food is good. Our water is static, but probably because it's just hitting its max storage for water. Water seems to have its own sort of rules for storage as opposed to other things. All right, I think what I would like to do is increase my my uh, nanite production over here. So what I want to do is be able to reach, say, this stone over here. I mean, there's lots of things to mine all over the map, but I'm going to keep growing in this area for now. Now, I can't grow this way because we don't have any construction drones in range, so we're going to go to our drone management over here, and we will indeed build a new construction hub as far as possible like that to increase our range. So we're going to do that and then reach out there. Um, so mine here, geothermals in this area. We could build a little bit more solar panels. But again, they don't work as well in the winter. Food is still good. So I'm not going to build any more farms. In fact, I guess all our farms are probably are properly being worked now, which is good. Um, jobs filled 100%. So actually, we're going to start getting some unemployment. No, nope, 94. Yeah, so it's basically right balanced right now, which is pretty nice. But I think what we're going to do is what am i looking for mining oh we'll need some nanites for that so let me save that up in fact it'd be nice to just build the um the highest tier mine right away so we're gonna need this road regardless so i'm gonna get that going on so it looks like we have a fertile area over here Ooh, we have a cargo pod we can go and pick up all this stuff if we get a drone within range so we'll want to do that soon and here's that let's get the mine down 
and then we'll have to build the nanite thing. And again, the nanite thing can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be by the mine. In fact, since it's only a one by one square, I think we'll fit it in here quite nicely. I'm going to build the, uh, the tier two right away. Bam, like that. Okay. Now, I'm sure this, yeah, has some employees, but they might not be happy about their commute and whatnot. It might be nice to build them a little house over here. What else do we need? Well, it would be a good idea for us to start getting some, um, the mills, the chemical plants, and the research centers so that we can unlock more powerful things. Luckily, we're making pretty good income now. Again, the farming's good. Uh, the water is still fine. More geothermal over here, as well as there, but I actually think what I want to do because we're a little bit close to our cap, is I want to get a tier 2 geothermal over here. Oh, you've got nothing in range. My other geothermal hasn't been upgraded. Where are you? Right over here. No, so let's upgrade you, actually. Get some more max power. That's going to be quite handy. And then, yeah, we'll need another drone over here. So that's coming in well. Iron is accruing a little bit, but not much. Still, that's pretty much ideal. I think if we had more storage, I actually would be able to store more water. Not that I need it. But our storage is starting to get a little bit full, so before we sort of forget things... Um, actually, we can upgrade you. And again, there we go, so we don't need more people or more space. Keep you up there. Excellent. Crew a little bit more stuff. Make sure we've got a lot of food through the winter, although right now we have tons of food. We are indeed good. Um, we are population capped, so... Let's go and get some housing over here. You can build uh, skyscrapers later on. Very big buildings. Huge. But I think I'll just get a tier 2 habitat over here. And actually, we'll upgrade this one as well soon. Or now. Get a bunch more population cap. So start to bring that in. And if we take a look, I would suspect that our air quality is starting to drop a little bit. Yeah. See here, the air quality is a lot lower because it's quite far away from our intakes. So we might want to look into that. So, intake maintains Earth-like oxygen ratio inside the colony. The structure is vulnerable to toxic gas emissions. I believe the geothermal vents tend to do that. Whereas air filters, it's a lot more expensive than air take, but, it's n but it, it is more efficient and not vulnerable to toxic air emissions. So, it, I think in a combination is what you probably end up doing, just on the basis that it's, um, I don't know, probably a lot easier to manage. So I'm going to get an air filter sort of out in this end of things. So it'll maintain the air in this area. Oh, we got another reward. I'm pleased, with the progress of your I'm pleased as well. I'm going to get more immigrants. We got room for it. We've got lots of food. Currently food is going down because it's winter, but I'm pretty okay with this. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the construction drones. Because what they will do is they will... You get a pair of drones per each, and they run a lot faster. Another reward. I'm going to keep getting immigrants, especially since the goal right now is to just get more and more and more people. So we can grow things that much faster if we keep doing that. All right, resources are good. Populations shouldn't be capped at this point. There we go. We can upgrade these to the next level, which I will do as well. So we've got lots and lots and lots of room. I hope you're keeping the happiness of your colonists in mind. Ooh, soda. All right, so there's a lot of different foodstuffs that we can start producing, and I really want to get started on that. I wonder about our our overall nanite count. And if the be best thing to do isn't to just build one more mine, actually. Laser mine can extract minerals much quicker than a mine, but destroys half the minerals in the process. So I don't think I'm going to do that. And you need you need the drone building, so yeah. Um, drone management, scrubber drone, police drone. So I'm going to put you here, which will extend our range. We can always get the geothermals hooked up as well at that point. Alright, since we've got a moment here. Um, storage is fine. Need ridiculous nanites for this. That's why I really do want to extend things out. Oh, I can get the, this cargo pod. Ooh, which includes a bunch of nanites. Nice. Might start to hit our storage a little bit, though. So I think I'm going to go ahead and build another storage module. Um, maybe here. And then over here, we're going to get some mining. I'll just wait for the tier 3, since we have to build all the roads anyway. Like that. And almost certainly we'll need another nanite processor, so we've got some room for it there. So I'll do that. Okay. So lots of mining going on. Things should be coming in at a pretty good clip now. 
depending on how the population is set up and spread out. Cargo pod was acquired, excellent. Lots of nanites came in from there. So what I really wanna do is get our research center down. Now this thing is huge and actually does need a fair amount of power. Let's build it there. We may want some more population over here as well. How's my unemployment? 7%. Jobs totally filled. Yeah, so I really have to get to building more buildings here. Although a lot of people will be employed by the research center. So that's going to be good. So there we are. Room for builders. And then we have to tell it what to research. And there's a bunch of different things we can research, including, say, some alien food, but also drug if we want to go that way. I'm going to start with the alien food. Um, let's research Intari bread, which is going to prompt me to make a farm for... And tari, right over here. So we're going to start growing Antari, which we can't eat directly. I'm going to go and put it over there. But we can process in different things. The other thing we could start doing, and it's probably a good idea. Oh, especially if we're making bread, not only do we need Antari, but we will need wheat. And we're going to have to process that into flour. So maybe something over here. And yeah, I want to put some housing over here. I'm going to try to avoid the actual... Um... Oh, and our power sucks. Hold on. Geothermal generator over there. And... Let's do that. And actually, I want to get another route, say, this way. There we go. So geothermal for more power. Get the farming up and going. I mean, our resources overall are fine. Barn grill lots its power. If one of our, our storage depots lose their power, then we're going to lose a whole lot of food. Now, our power's better in the winter because we do actually have uh, solar panels. But we don't have that many solar... Or better in the summer. Better not in the winter is what I meant to say. But we don't have that many solar panels. I think it's probably a good idea for us to get a little solar farm going on. Um, let's see here. I think right over here. Now, people don't actually have to reach the solar panels. And put a couple down, and then put our first energy battery down as well here. Energy battery increases the energy generation of up to eight adjacent buildings, so it includes diagonals, and it can store some power as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a bunch of solar panels around this battery. They don't need people, but they still generate power half in the winter, but it's not bad. Reach population 200. Geothermal generator. Oh, it doesn't actually... can't get people. It's too far away from any of our housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little apartment over here somewhere within range of that. So I want it to be near a lot of other services too, but I guess, you know what, this is gonna be fine. And I'm gonna build a little shortcut here. I don't wanna replace any of my farm plots. I wanna get us to do that. So we got a few different shortcuts we're getting around and that should be okay. So our population, yeah, 73%, jobs filled 85%. That's actually a pretty good set of numbers. I'm not unhappy about that. We've got an air quality alert where? Over here. So let's go and get ourselves um, an air intake right in there. Yeah, so the air quality is pretty good here with that vent or that, um, that air filter, but we'll get a vent in here. Oh, a shard storm. Sensors have detected an incoming storm of ice shards. Though small, some of these shards have the potential to damage your colony's buildings. So if it does, we'll actually see a health meter. Also, your buildings do, I think, decay a little over time, which makes uh, this policy down here quite handy, the drone auto repair. It eats some of my minerals every day, like every soul, which is our entire cycle, but it will automatically send out drones to repair things, so I don't have to babysit things quite as carefully, which is really, really handy. In fact, you can see the drones have just gone out now. They're going to go and do a bunch of little repairs to some buildings who could use it. This battery, I'm going to go ahead and go upgrade it. And so now the power is much, much better off. It'll be a little weaker in the winter, um, but it's probably okay. Especially now that people are going to start working over here. So I think I'm content with that. All right, so our research is going on. I'm going to go ahead and queue up like a bunch more research as well. Maybe some of the, some, the dope as well. Okay, so that's all in there. Um, so we've got flour, we've got this, we've got that. The next thing we're going to need is a mill over here to start processing the flour into, or the the wheat into flour, and then to start producing our Antari bread. We can also just produ provide, or produce bread bread. Air quality alert. So where's this one? That's still over here. Now the air quality should be improving in this area because of the vent. If it's not improving quickly enough, I might be tempted to put another air filter over here. In fact, there's a lot of buildings in this end of things. So you know what's probably a good idea 
for us to go and just generally get another vent and uh, we'll see where we can fit one in or maybe I'll put an actual air filter yeah blocked but it'll fit here and the air quality here isn't great either so yeah we'll get that up research complete on our entire bread excellent we got our immigrants and we've got that shard storm but hopefully things are still going to be okay so just mostly accruing some nanites here how is my looks like what we mostly still need is just more um did i ever build a trade depot i don't think i did did i oh trade hub over here so what we can do is we can trade through that the trade ui which i can do here each trade hub can get one contract so what am i interested in sending and you can see in the mouse over it'll tell me what i currently have so i can trade broccoli and get pasta back if i was concerned about food i could if i had melons i could export it for beer get rice for water um call for this let's get broccoli and trade it for pasta it'll increase our food diversity without actually having us need to produce it that's quite nice and resource management i think what i need actually is another mine not necessarily another man nanite producer but another mine so where do we build it i guess up here kind of hard to reach we did not spawn near a bunch of minerals yeah, no construction zones, no construction drones, rather, in either place. Hmm. I think we're just going to be a little lacking on all those things. You're fully upgraded. I had another mine over here, didn't I, Ot? Barn grill. Iron mine. Yeah, you're fully upgraded. And I'm sure this one is as well. Um, including some unhappy people. The commute is quite long. Could we get some housing near you, maybe? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's get a little apartment in this end so that you can have some people a little bit closer up. Air quality. Still complaining about the air quality here, but it should actually be okay. I'm going to go and bump you up to the next tier just to try to buff that as much as possible. Uh, the vents over here as well. We're going to upgrade you. I mean, we're using a fair amount of nanites for this, but it's probably worthwhile. I mean, we want our people to breathe. Food situation is fan-freaking-tastic, but we need to get our production up. Housing, 66%, so we can fit a lot more people in here. Especially if we get the uh, the food production going. Alright, chemical plants, it's something else for us to do. But, first I'm going to start with the mill. Um, I'm going to get that going over here. And you know what, you have enough for a chemical plant. Let's go and plop that down as well, and we can look at those things. I don't know if, how much we have to research for that. I think that's actually out of bounds over here. Yeah. That's not a, uh, a drone limit, because actually our drones are over here, but we can't build on this desert sand. It's just a little too, too much. Power situation isn't the greatest anymore, but what I can do is put another power thing next. Oh, because it is winter, so we are producing less. But I'll put a solar panel next to the battery as well for more efficiency. And the next thing we'll do is probably go out and trade vessel. Trading our broccoli, that's good. Science is complete. Building destroyed by lightning. The tunnel. Tunnels don't have a lot of hit points, so they're particularly vulnerable to being shot down by lightning in one hit, so you never get a chance to repair them. All right, here's our mill, and we've got some people working here. So uh, I will, well, I guess we can't do the upgrade. So then you enable and tell it what you want it to process. I would like it to process flour. Um, you can also get your barley converted into porridge, but I don't think I'm going to do that because we'll probably use the barley to start producing beer. But you can see here, now that we've got flour, the bread is lit up, so we can turn flour into bread, or we can turn a, a combination of flour and antari into antari bread, which I assume is better. You can also make flour into pasta. And honestly, I might want to turn all those on to get a lot of variety, right? So regular bread, uh, antari bread, pasta, turn porridge on. Now all of a sudden, people are getting tons of different food. We don't need corn syrup right now for candy, but we could start producing it. We do have corn, so we can produce corn syrup. I also produce beer over here. I can turn water into antibiotics and antivirals, which is going to make our um, our hospitals better. And uh, hey, why not make some maybe some sake as well? And now we've got corn syrup. We can also make soda. So we're getting a big variety of stuff. This one place may not quite be able to keep up with it. It'll help if we upgrade these places. Um, but there also might not be enough resources coming in. We will be told if something gets shut down from time to time. Another tunnel getting shut down over there, which we're going to rebuild air quality alert is happening over at this end which makes sense because we don't actually have any specific air filters over here um i'm gonna probably build in a proper air filter itself in this end of things does need a fair amount of nanites to pull that off though but just a level one air filter for now and then we can come back and upgrade it later on sort of right there in that central area 
Probably another one over here. I think the geothermals are quite bad for venting horrible gas, too. Yeah, speaking of, this area is not doing great. So again, I'll wait for an actual air filter it's and plop it down there. Election. Oh, there's another referendum. Finish researching Bliss. Bliss obviously might be a pretty good way to keep people happy. Um, Bliss is over here. It requires star glow and quarry beans. Powder that seems to enable profound happiness causes the opposite effect when withdrawn. So if you start producing Bliss, you want to keep that going. Then there's Amber Joy, which is basically turbo caffeine over here. So you can start doping up your, your citizens and keep that going. Uh, yeah, you'll get notices from our batteries from time to time. The air quality is indeed pretty poor. I'm going to get this to be upgraded here. And I'll probably just keep going. Because it's got a lot of area to pump. And we may as well get it fully upgraded. If you've got people working somewhere... I think it's always worth building the top one, except unless you don't have the nanites right that second, so building level one and then upgrading later on is fine. So our bread production halted. We probably ran out of wheat, so that's a good hint that, hey, maybe we want some more wheat farms. Yeah, it seems like a good place to put it over here. I mean, there's places that will produce a little bit more, but it's a fine place. It uses up our space relatively efficiently. So I get that. I think we're going to want some more housing in this area because we've got a lot of people nearby. So I think it'd be a swell place to put in some more habitations, but yeah, it is indeed blocked. Oh, so we can put it here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I suspect we'll also want more air filtration over here. I'll probably wait until we start getting some messages. Yeah, I'm willing to bet we were low on the actual flower is what was going on there. There's a referendum election coming up soon. Too much crime, miss the shopping centers, comments. can barely breathe. So we we're working on the air quality. Um, the crime and the shopping centers is definitely something we could do. We should get some police drones going on so that we can start countering some of the crime in these areas. So you do have to start with a level one. And you can see the crime's, well, pretty much bad everywhere here. So I'm going to start over here. Should be nice and central, hopefully. And then once it gets built, we've unlocked the tier two, so I'll upgrade to that right away. And then when that gets built, we've unlocked the tier three, so I'll go and upgrade to that right away. May as well use things as well as possible. Good high-ranking habitats. We could preemptively build a scrubber drone if we've got creep, but I don't think we're getting much in the creep. Might not be on this map either. We're doing some more research here. At some point, you do finish, as far as I know, all the research. So at that point, you could probably get rid of the research center. But we'll see. So, um... What do I need? Kelcospores, star glow. I don't know how to produce star glow, but we may want to go and start farming all of the remaining resources here. Uh, actually, before I build that, I'm going to go and extend a road out. Sort of like that. And like that. It gives us a few different options for putting some more farms. There we are. Uh, farm. And I know there's some slowdown for some of the building modes. So we got Antar. We don't grow Kelco yet. Looks like... These are alien uh, crops. They tend to grow everywhere pretty well on these planets. Because I guess, you know, they're native to this. Which makes some amount of sense. How are we doing on, like... Iron, no. Hi, boss. I've compiled some feedback. Seventy-four percent. Nice. You're saying it's too crowded. Well, we'll work on that in a second. Probably means not enough housing. So farm, we've got that. Let's build some Xeno Sage, which is great for making spice bread. And quarry spores, which I'll put over there. And then we'll get back and see how things go then. Um, so we've got the police, which is great. So people do want some shopping. They also want the healthcare. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to build a retail center. And the more central, the better for that. That won't literally reach every building, but it will reach a good number of them. So we're going to do this. It will be our centers as well. And yeah, we'll have to get some healthcare down soon too. We can build some more parks, I suppose. But that's going to be good enough for now. How is our actual population? Um, housing capacity is 60%. Oh, no, we're, we're fine. There's lots of space right now. I don't know what people are complaining about. Keep getting the new residents in. That's going to be okay. And, yeah, keep milling over here. Um, we're going to re-enable these. I think what we need to do is get a mill, a, a second mill, just to build flour. To try to keep pace. I think I kind of like that idea. And I do want to expand, I think, in this direction. So I'm going to do this. And right, and northwise as well. Like this. 
And let's get a construction hub right there. This way we can get more geothermal. There's some more mining to be had out here. But I think I want to build a big skyscraper as well as that second mill. So that's going to be my goal over here. We'll have to accrue some more nanites. But yeah, I think if we got a little bit more mining, I think we'd be able to get more nanites. Uh, expanding over here also would be a pretty good idea. i grab this and stretch it as far out as it'll go. And... Build a construction hub. Oh, we've got no power out to here. And you've been fully upgraded. We're entering winter, that's why we don't have any power. Which could be a little scary right now. There's a referendum election coming up soon. Eighty nine percent. That's pretty good. Colin doesn't take Law and Order seriously. Law and Order is a great show. People should definitely take it seriously. Alright, build a solar panel so we get a little bit more. I should really complete this little hub too. Is that fully upgraded? Oh not quite yet. Um I think it just adds to capacity. Although, it's not a bad idea to store more capacity before the winter. There you go. Now you're fully upgraded. Right now, we're good on power. Not by much. So I'm going to go and add more padding. Complete all these solar panels. And I'll feel a lot better. Yeah, we're good, we're good during the not winter. Potash. Oh, we can use that to accelerate. Okay, so it's not the kind of farm we were looking for. Or mine we were looking for. This is the sort of mine we're looking for over here. Tier 3 mine. Oh, I think. I oh, know, we're good. Oh, we're just that low on nano. Nanites, that's why we can't um, build this. Normally, I'm used to building these tunnels, like, willy-nilly wherever I want. So we can get that. We will need some more housing over here for things to be able to reach. So I think what I'll do is build a proper habitat over here. Tier 1 is probably sufficient. Congratulations on your referendum victory, boss. Yay. But, I say that, I'm still going to build the Tier 3. Just because you may as well. Again, it doesn't take up any more space. I don't think it takes up any more power. So, then you've got a lot more future-proofing. And speaking of power, anyway, I'm going to save up and put a Tier 2 geothermal on this. Connected to the colony like that. And then what I want to do is get some more air management over here. I want to get the uh, tier 3 filter. Yeah, building the extra mine has definitely increased our nanite income. So that's good. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is build it right here. Try to choke off the bad intake there. And we do have an air intake, an air, an air filter over here. Next to a farm. Yeah, so that's going to be fine. So we'll get that done. I think that's going to make me pretty happy. And it would not surprise me, actually, if we found out that iron still wouldn't go up. We do have potash, so I think... Oh, I think we got it from one of the little pods. So we could use that on one of our farms. So this is one of our wheat farms. Here, use some potash. More wheat. Because <laughs> we're going to build another mill. That's that research center. You know what? We got a bunch of population over here that doesn't have as much to do. So I'm going to go and get a tier 3 mill, or tier 2 mill, sorry, that's the max, built right over here. So the people here will be able to work that, and I think that's going to be great stuff. Um, our storage is still currently fine, although I really should consider building another storage depot. And actually, why not build one right here? It doesn't matter where they are as far as I know, but it feels good. Water is indeed low. We should get ourselves some more of that. I haven't built a water pump in a while. One water pump goes a really, really long way. So we're going to do that. Oh, plus we're using some of the water to build um, antibiotics and stuff, which we haven't used yet. Don't worry, your water's going to be fine. Chill out. So I'm just got to come over and build this stuff. And you're going to be totally okay. Don't even worry about it. But yeah, I think we're using quite a bit for our little production. More water pump. Uh, the counts are going up. I think it was taking a little while for our numbers to update. Yeah, no. We're good. Okay, excellent. That's good. Objective completed. Reward available. Let's get some more immigrants in here. Trade vessels. We're still getting the pasta, which is fantastic. Housing, 60%. Job filled, 66%. We've got lots of room for people. Uh, can I reach this? 
Nope, no drones in range. More geothermal, weird green glass things. Um, I don't suppose we could connect up our little hub over here, could we? Because that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Oops, not there. I should actually start from right here. Bam! Excellent! New mission. Request for you from 300 people. Of and, oh, can I get this? No, that's out of range too. Huh. It's very surprising. Anyway, um, I built this mill. I didn't actually give them any jobs, so you're going to be producing some flour for me. Because that is quite bottlenecked for us. Yeah, we got over a thousand units of wheat, so I think we're going to be fine with that in place. Research lab, you're still finishing a few things up. Ooh, some of these take a long time to research, which is fine, I guess. More little goodies. So, okay, there's lots of room to expand over here. Oh my god, yeah, no, this map goes on for quite some time. You could definitely build really big colonies in here. So, again, uh, it is in beta. It is a pre-release game. It's actually not technically available on Steam at this moment, although um, I'm playing on Steam, so certainly it's going to hit the uh, the store at some point. Almost certainly is early access. Again, you know, with these things, base building games tend to be really determined by the difficulty in the late game, uh, rather than, you know, just sort of getting this thing where you build this, then you do this, then you build this, then you do this. There are a few threats to face in, in the game, but um, I think it's kind of lovely, and it's worth keeping an eye on. I'll never recommend that someone buys a pre-release game, not until one has, like, officially been released in version 1.0 and has been reviewed, but uh, a lot of people were asking me to make a video, so here it is. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.